in our lab, we really focus on developing the fundamental molecular technologies that would give cells capabilities to communicate from inside the body. For example, cells can be programmed to home to certain locations within the body, and they can execute therapeutic programs. For example, they can synthesize and release proteins that will have some kind of therapeutic effect um, on the surrounding tissues. These microbes don't just go to the location you want them to go, but also to some extent go to other organs like the liver or lungs or the spleen, where if they carried out an aggressive therapeutic program, you might have some side effects. But we can apply ultrasound specifically at the part of the gastrointestinal tract that we want, and it can locally heat up that tissue by a few degrees Celsius and tell those bacteria that they're in the right place and that they should carry out their therapeutic program. And so what the study was about was finding the right biomolecules that we could engineer and introduce into bacteria that would give them this functionality. Uh, Dan and Mohammed screened a library of different mechanisms, different transcriptional regulators that were known to have some response to temperature and identified two in particular that had very sharp switching, meaning over the span of just a few degrees Celsius, they could go from completely off to very strongly on in terms of gene expressions. So when we were thinking about how to get bacteria to sense temperature, we went through the literature and looked at how this is done in nature. Nature itself has implemented ways in which bacteria can sense the surrounding environment. We tested out their performance and we actually called out the ones that didn't make the cut, found the ones that had the best switching performance. Their expression level can be amplified, the, their thresholds can be shifted back and forth, and from there. But it all started with nature and what it's given for us. They used this protein engineering approach that actually was pioneered by my colleague Francis Arnold to tune these thermal bioswitches so that they operate exactly at the temperatures so that we could have now different versions of these thermostats that would respond precisely at the temperatures we were interested in for the different applications that we showed in this paper. In addition to controlling these cells using ultrasound signals that directly communicate with them, we can also have another way of controlling the cells where we don't even need to communicate and the cells will just respond to changes in temperature. For example, if we're you know, administering a microbe into somebody and the microbe is going haywire and doing something wrong, one of the responses that the, the subject might have is a fever. And so it might be useful for microbes to be able to detect if their host has a fever, so their temperature increased by a couple degrees, to take that as a command that tells them that they should be less aggressive in their therapy, that they should you know, stop proliferating or they should stop releasing a cytokine that they're releasing uh, or maybe even you know, kill themselves and, and go away. We're really combining the physics of ultrasound and the engineering aspects of that with the biology and, and biochemistry of proteins with this kind of genetic and cellular engineering uh, in the middle and kind of taking it all the way from point A to point B. And I think we've laid the groundwork with these fundamental technologies, but the next step is then to couple them to a lot of great work that other people are doing on how to use microbes as actual therapies and to insert our module for thermal control into the bigger picture of these therapies before something can go out into a patient. <laughs>